Hello everyone and welcome to an academy platform. So let's get me PG. Myself, Dr. Muskan Jodhri and we will discuss today about the cell Molina and the Yar Senior. So uh, starting with the Unacademy, Unacademy is India's largest learning platform where you get access to both the live and the recorded sessions. You will be able to assess both the sessions as the recorded one whenever you feel like from any part of the world and learning from the India's topmost educator for any medical examination, be it NEET, EG or the NEET PG and compete in the live TNDs and test your preparation with a highly competitive quizzes. Study on the device of your choice and benefit from the uh, exclusive uh, chance of watching the videos from, on your device from anywhere and assess up to 25,000 of the MCQs for all, all, uh, for all the almost uh, every high yield potential questions with printed and the digital notes. Uh, icon subscription is there under which prep letter has come together with the uh, an academy and you get access to clinical and integrated essentials with video lectures from the dream team two banks and the rapid revision sessions with 2022 dream notes. With well-structured live batches, recorded sessions, Q banks of around 25,000 MCQs and TNDs with printed and digital notes. For uh, 24 months, it will cost us around 1500 per month and 1250 per month and 1625 per month for 18 months. And please do use my code that is MUSKAN10 to get 10% of the discount. Under icon subscriptions, it will cost us around 58500 for 2 years and 2438 per month. 2875 for 18 months and for 36 months it will be 1875. There is a hand feature that is there and you can personalize your uh, interactive classes and make the classes more interactive, clearing out your basic concepts because you can raise your hand and ask your doubts directly from your educators and enable one on one um, interaction with your educator. 25,000 MCQs based on latest examination patterns and detailed explanations. Special class features include the live classes, attend the live class, participate in the live chat, gets your doubt cleared, do the polling uh, for, for the any of the questions and raise a handed feature that is present. Never miss the class because you will get the notification for the same. Attend the lecture notes and uh, from anywhere and anytime. For 24 months subscription, 4 month is totally free and 12 month, 2 month is totally free with 6 month, 1 month is totally free on the UN Academy. And do use my code that is MUSKAN10 to get 10% of the discount. Alright, so uh, we will start with the cell Molina. Okay, so uh, starting with the cell Molina, there was some technical glitch. Cell Molina, we'll start today about the enteric fever and the typhoid and the paratyphoid fever that we'll talk about now.
Now, they are generally, they are motile. They are motile and belonging to the family, to the family of what? Enteobacteria. So, if you remember that in the Enteobacteria, we remember that all are motile by peritrichus flagella or are motile by what? Peritrichus flagella. But the bird, Sassy was non motile, but Sassy was what non motile. And what is this Sassy? That is S stands for H stands for Shigella, A stands for A typical E. coli, A typical E. coli, and S another S stands for cell molina. Although cell molina is what motile, but cell molina gallinorum is non motile and Yarsenia. Apart from this, Klebsiella, that is also non-motile. So, all these are what? All these are non-motile enterobacterial family. Bacteria that are what? Non-motile. Now, when we talk about the cell molina, only two species are what? They are uh, pathogenic, that is cell molina and trica. And they are further divided into six subspecies. They are further divided into six subspecies based on the 3000 serotypes are available for them on the basis of what? On the basis of H antigen, O antigen and B antigen. So, all the cell molina are motile except what? Except cell molina gallinarum. That is what? That is non motile. That is non motile. Previously, the alter classification was there that was based on the typhoid, that is the typhoidal and the non typhoidal. Typhoid includes what? Cell molina typhi and cell molina. Paratyphi, TK typhi and the paratyphi. Another one, this was the older classification that is typhi and the paratyphi. Then we have, then we have what the molecular classification that is based on the DNA hybridization study and it consists of the seven groups. Another one is the antigenic classification that I already told you we need to remember it is a Kaufman white scheme. Kaufman white scheme based classification that is based on the antigen O antigen mainly type more than what two three double nine zero types. Now what we need to remember that salmon are motile but exception we have is the salmon gallinarum. All the classification was there but what do we use? We use more mostly antigenic classification that is the Kaufman white scheme. We need to remember the Kaufman white scheme that is based on the O antigen. When we talk about the antigens of the cell molina typhi, these are O, H and V, I antigens. Now, H antigen is what a flagellar antigen. H antigen is what a flagellar antigen. What else we need to remember that H antigen is a flagellar antigen and it is, it is a flagellar antigen and it is protein in nature. So, since it is a protein, so it will be highly antigenic. It will be highly antigenic and heat and alcohol, heat and alcohol labile. All right. And it forms the, it forms earliest and persist for several months. is important to remember. So, when we talk about the antigens of the S typhi, we need to remember in the H antigen, in the H antigen, H is a flagellar antigen and H for H, it is heat labile and the alcohol labile. It is a protein antigen. Protein is strongly antigenic. So, it is highly antigenic with heat and alcohol labile and it is the earliest antigen that appears and persists for several months. So, this is important to remember that it is the earliest to appear and uh, after infection and persist for several months. So, formaldehyde is stable, strongly immunogenic, H antibody appears late and goes late, reacts to H antibody form large, loose, uh, fluffy clumps. Exist in two alternative forms, that is most of them are biphasic except S-typhi and paratyphi A, that is monophasic. 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव ओ एंटीजन एंड ओ एंटीजन इज व्हाट अ सोमेटिक एंटीजन एंड दिस इज व्हाट दिस इज पॉलीसेक्राइड इन नेचर दिस इज पॉलीसेक्राइड इन नेचर एंड पॉलीसेक्राइड दैट इज लोअर एंटीजेनिक लोअर एंटीजेनिसिटी हैविंग इट लोअर एंटीजेनिसिटी एंड इट इज स्टेबल ठीक है सो रिमेंबर हाउ टू वी रिमेंबर दैट ओ एंटीजन इज अ पॉलीसेक्राइड एज दैट इज ओ एंटीजन सोमेटिक एंटीजन सेक्राइड एंटीजन एंड स्टेबल एंटीजन दैट इज हीट एज वेल एल्कोहोल स्टेबल ठीक है सो इट इज हीट एज वेल एल्कोहल स्टेबल एंड ओ एंटीबॉडीज फॉलोज द एच एंटीबॉडीज एंड डिजअपियर इन फ्यू वीक्स If you remember the H anti anti uh, antigen that was uh, appearing early and persisted up for a long time, but they disappear. They disappear in few weeks. That is, we are talking about what we are talking about O antigen. So, uh, since they disappear in a few weeks, so that is having a significant role in the Vidal. In the Vidal, we see both. In the Vidal test, we see for both H antibodies and O antibodies. Now, uh, if we are having the significant H antibodies and insignificant O antibodies, then we'll consider as less infection. But if we have O antibodies that is a significant value, then we'll consider is a active infection the reason being that we know that o antibodies uh, o antigen that uh, disappears in few weeks and if the presence of the o antibodies in the serum that means the infection is still active all right so what we need to remember in the h and o is that o antigen is uh, heat as well as alcohol stable and it is a poorly antigenic because polysaccharide in nature and o antibodies although appears early but it will appear after the h antibodies but they disappears early okay so these two points we need to remember now next we come to the vi antigen that is also polysaccharide in nature that is also polysaccharide in nature and it has the least antigenicity it has the least antigenicity although it is heat labile heat labile but what alcohol stable it is alcohol stable So we need to remember that this is what this is alcohol stable. The O antigen was alcohol as well heat stable, and this is alcohol stable. So it is a heat labile and possessed by S type V, para type C, Dublin, and the Citrobacter. So it is not present in all the Salmonella. It is mainly present in the type V, para type C, and Dublin. Also, even the some strains of the E. coli and the Citrobacter, we also get what we get the VI antigen. Now, poorly immunogenic because it is least uh, antigenicity. Absence of antibody in proven uh, in a proven case uh, carries the poor prognosis and persistent in the conversion state shows the carrier state. So, this is important for the carrier state. Please remember that persistence of the VI antibodies. indicate what indicates the carrier state all right so what are the points that we need to remember that uh, in the h antigen flagella antigen it both labile and it is protein therefore highly antigenic and uh, appears early disappears late while o antigen is both stable heat as well alcohol appears early but uh, disappears also early vi antigen is responsible for the carrier state if the antibodies are present All right. Now, now we'll come to the pathogenesis of the antric fever. We'll come to the antric fever. Now, most of the cases, uh, the antric fever, more than ninety percent of the cases of the antric fever are caused by the as type p but they can also be caused by the uh, para type p as well infective dose is about 10 to power 3 to 6 if you remember uh, for the dysentery 
for the shigella the infective dose was 10 to 100 and for the cell molena it was 10 is to power 3 to 10 is to power 6 for the vibrio it was 10 is to power 6 to 10 is to power 8 so this is sequence we need to remember for the shigella it was 10 to 100 then 10 is to power 3 to 6 and then 10 is to power 6 to 8 for the vibrio what is the incubation period is again important incubation period is about 14 10 to 14 days 10 to 14 days it is it is strictly it is strictly human disease it is strictly human disease ठीक है सो इट इज स्ट्रिक्टली ह्यूमन डिजीज दैट इज एक्वायर्ड दैट इज एक्वायर्ड बाय द कंटेमिनेटेड फूड एंड वाटर ठीक है सो इट इज अ स्ट्रिक्टली ह्यूमन डिजीज दैट इज एक्वायर्ड बाय फूड एंड द कंटेमिनेटेड फूड एंड द वाटर एंड इंफेक्टेड डोज वी हैव रिमूव्ड इन इट्स अबाउट 3 टू 6 एंड इट एंटर्स बाय द एम सेल्स दैट इज लाइनिंग द जीआईटी म्यूकोसा नियर द पेयर्स पैचेस दैट इज प्रेजेंट एंड द सेवन टिगर्स द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द रफल्स ऑफ द एम सेल्स these refers will further enclose the bacteria within the large vesicles inside the m cells by a process that is known as bacteria mediated endocytosis and transported to the basolateral pockets of the m cells or the engulfed by the macrophage and this will induce the infiltration this will induce the infiltration all right so this will disseminate throughout the body in the macrophage we are the lymphatics and the colonize the reticulo endothelial tissue what is the risk factor the people already having the low immunity already on the therapies and the oral uh, antibiotics on the hospital with the uh, mostly poorly hygienic people because it is a reason by the contaminated food and the water and children are the most affected okay So is a pathophysiology that we discussed that we ingest the contaminated food and the water. Then we ingest the cell molecule that is invading the M cells and the intestinal mucosa. Then further to the lymph node, they multiply there and they infect the M cells, pairs, patches, causing what? diarrhea and the, at the end of the incubation period, that is ten is to fourteen days, this bacilli will enter what? Blood. and causes what which phase bacteremia invading later the gall bladder the biliary system and the lymphatic tissues and they pass into the stool the same gram negative basal typhi a b and c incubation period is about 10 to 14 days now coming to the clinical features of the typhoid coming to the clinical features of the enteric fever now coming to clinical features uh, clinical features a patient will present with the fever we present with the bradycardia pleno migeli and later with the complication of the intestinal perforation and the hemorrhage okay so one is that the patient will present with the strep led type of the fever it is the strep led type of the fever with the raw spots that is not present in all the patient but up to 30% coated tongue with headache and the mental uh, mental status that is altered with hepatosplenomegaly epistaxis and very important one that is the relative bradycardia with another important one that is the pea soup diarrhea so raw spots pea soup diarrhea relative bradycardia step ladder fever these are some important terms that we need to remember here and complications include the git bleeding and bleeding and the perforations and the paratyphi a always less common and it will also cause the milder type of disease and if causes will mainly involve the git symptoms later neuropsychiatric symptoms will be present that is described as what muttering delirium Okay. muttering delirium or coma vigil 
there are some few important terms strep bladder fever pea soups relative bradycardia uh, strep bladder fever and the coma vigi or the muttering delirium So these are what these are some people up to 30% of the patients will develop the raw uh, spots that is a small red spots on the mainly on the abdomen back and the chest and you can easily appreciate them and patient will have the symptoms of white coating over the tongue all right and what is raw spots on the body with the hepatosplenomegaly step ladder fever and altered sensorium that is what delirium and comma vigil so we'll come now to the role of the lab diagnosis we do the culture for the culture we take the specimens from the blood feces urine bone marrow and the rose spots media is a very important media is a very important one is the enrichment media so enrichment media for that uh, cell molina and the shigella if you remember enrichment media is what is liquid in nature enrichment media is what liquid in nature and what are the examples of the enrichment media for the cell molina and the shigella that is tetrathionate broth selenite f broth and the gram negative broth Selenite F growth has what the selenium that is inhibitory to the coliforms present a normal commercial flora and it will increase the growth of what cell molina. Similarly, for the tetrathionate growth and the gram negative growth. So important when the medias are important. Next, we have the selective medias. Selective medias are the deoxycolicitrate agar, XLD agar, Shigella cell molina agar, and the Wilson Blair media, where will they will show the jet black colonies. On the selective medias, the cell molina will show the jet black colonies. And on the blood culture bottles that we use what? For the blood culture, we use the castaneda biphasic media. Apart from this, we dial test, we check for the H and O antibodies. Uh, we also go into detail in the VIDAR in the coming slides and the demonstration of the circulating antibodies. We need to remember the medias, enrichment media, tetrathion growth, salentine growth and the gram negative growth. Selective media, DCA, XLD and the SSA agar. Next, we come to the biochemical reactions that we do and we know that ships are non-lactose fermenters. Okay, ships are what? Non-lactose fermenters that is SH is what? Shigella. Okay, ships. Yarsenia. Then we have what? Proteus. And then we have what? Cell molina. They all are what? Non lactose fermenters. And first two are non H2S producers, and the rest two are H2S producers. Okay. So they are non lactose fermenters and they are motile. We've already seen except the gallinorum. That is what? That is non motile. H2S producers that you have seen except the stains of the para typhi A. Citrate accepts the paratyphy A. Now, coming to the agglutination with specific antisera, S typhi with O9 antisera, A paratyphy with O2, and paratyphy B with O4 antisera. What we need to remember here one is the non lactose fermenters. We know the list, so that is okay. We know that is all our mortal exception. We need to remember that is gallinera and all paratyphy A that is non H2S producers. Coming to the Vidal test. Now, Vidal test is a type of what type of tube A glutination test? Is a type of tube A glutination test and it detects what H antibodies and O antibodies in the patient's serum. 
and when we see about the H and O antibodies, obviously O antibody is more specific because we know that the O antibodies they appear early and they disappear early, and it is more pro uh, more uh, probable shows the probability for the active infection compared to that of the H antibodies. Now, coming to the Vidal test, four antigens are used. That is O antigen of S typhi and H antigen of S typhi and S paratyphi A and B. So we use O antigen of S typhi and H antigen of S typhi, S paratyphi A, S paratyphi B. Only one O antigen is used as all the species as O antigen actually cross react. So this is important to remember. In the Vidal test, we use O and H antigens and O antigen is used of S typhi only, not of the rest of the uh, paratyphes because of the cross reactivity. Strains that we use is the S typhi 901 strain. Paratyphi A and B and preparation formalin is added for the preparation and cultured in the phenol agar followed by the alcohol and further heated. Need to remember the tubes. The tubes that we use for the H antigen is what? Dreyer's conical tube. Important one. Dreyer's conical tube we use for what? H antigen and we use the Felix round tube okay we use the phallic round tube for the o antigen easy to remember o is round so we use the round phallic round tube and the dreyer's conical tube now procedure is that the patient serum is diluted antigens are and, uh, added and incubated at 37 degree for overnight incubation so the patient serum is further diluted and antigens are added Interpretation, how we do the interpretation that we need to do. Antibodies actually appear. Uh, if you remember the mnemonic, very famous mnemonic, that is the BASU. That is B, A, S and U. First week, we do the blood culture. Then we do the Vidal or agglutination by the second week. Third is the stool culture. Fourth is the urine culture. Fourth week. So, uh, by the end of the first week, and uh, antibodies start appearing and peaks at third week then start falling. We see the fall fall rise between the first and the third week that is highly significant. And anamnestic reaction may give the false positive uh, in unrelated infections. Significant titer, titer of 1 is 200 for OA glutenins and 1 is to 200 for H antibodies. Okay. H antibodies that is appearing late and goes late. O agglutinins appears early and goes early and rise in indicate the active infection, recent infection. Okay. So O agglutinins uh, plays a major role and is more significant because it appears early and disappears early and rise in the O antigens, uh, antibodies against antigens indicate the recent active infection. If the patient is already on the antibiotics, false negative may occur. If fimbril antigens are not removed, then false positive may also occur. Now, principal antibodies in the serum that is produced in response to cellular organism, the kit contains the antigen suspensions. We take actually patient serum and the patient serum already has the antibodies. So, patient serum has already has the antibodies and the kit contains the antigen suspensions. The blue stained antigens are specific to the somatic antigens while the red are specific to the flagellar antigen that is H antigen. So, remember the blue antigens are for the O antigens and the red one for the flagellar antigen or the H antigen. Also remember the tube that is the phallic uh, tube that is a round tube that is used for the O and the Dreyer's conical tube that is used for the H. Other antibodies detection methods includes the typhidot, 
ठीक है टाइफोटॉप इज एक्चुअली इम्यूनोक्रोमैटोग्राफिक टेस्ट which detects the igm and igg antibody and it detects the separately igg and the igm antibody it identifies the recent or the remote infection okay so typhoid remember the name the typhoid that is the immunochromatographic test that detects the recent or the remote infection because it detects obviously uh, separately igg and igm so recent or the remote infection very easy to do as it is very rapid and next test we do but the problem with the typhoid dot is that they are neither sensitive nor specific for the diagnosis one we do is the diazo test which detects the phenolic compound okay which detects the phenolic compound in the urine and it is highly sensitive and highly specific and present only in the first week therefore we can do for the enteric fever patient with the enteric fever in the first week diazo test that is detecting what the phenolic compound in the first week of the patient highly sensitive and the highly specific next we have we did the typhoid dot immunochromatographic test that is uh, detects the igg igm separately so recent and remote infection but is no sensitive nor specific next we did the diazo test to check for the phenolic compound that is highly sensitive and the specific but in the first week only then we do the antigen detection test that is by latex agglutination test and that too also in the first week other than this we use the ideal tubex and igm tip stick Uh, test and dot blot assay. So remember all these names: typhoid dot diazo test and the LAT latex agglutination test and the typhi dot test. Now, week-wise diagnosis that we see by the mnemonic that is what BASU. That is the first week. Uh, that is the gold standard, and we do what we do the. Blood culture. The gold standard is to take out the duodenal content culture. and it is more sensitive than the bone marrow which is more sensitive than the blood culture best is the combination of all the three but if as the gold standard then this is the duodenal content culture next is the bone marrow then we have the blood culture if the patient is on antibiotic if the patient is already on the antibiotic then blood bone marrow culture is more sensitive Okay. so remember in the first week duodenal culture more than the bone marrow culture more than the blood culture if the patient is on antibiotic then the obviously bone marrow culture be more sensitive than that of the blood culture blood culture sensitivity in the first week second week and the third week decreases up to 90% then it is 75 and then it is 60% in the third week blood culture higher sensitivity than the uh, uh blood culture this clot culture and of the first week we start doing the vidal test because if you remember the mnemonic vasu that is the blood culture and agglutination test that is the vidal we start doing at the end of the first week and up to second to third week we do the vidal test third and the fourth week we do the stool and the urine culture stool culture is positive both in case of the case as well as carrier and positive even after the start of the antibiotics so now coming to the carriers so carriers 
now chronic carriers uh, first we'll categorize the carriers now according to the site of the persistence carriers may be because of the presence of the persistence of the infection where in the uh, in that of the gallbladder or the urinary tract so chronic carriers that are more than one year common in case of the women and in case of the infants Typhoid Mary, everybody knows the name that uh, she gave rise to more than 1300 cases in her entire life. In India, we have the prevalence of the 3% carriers and where the carriers is because of the infection that is residing mainly in the biliary tract and very important gallbladder and rarely urinary tract. In India, we mainly have the fecal carriers. But urine carriers are more dangerous than fecal carriers and are associated with the anomalies and the cystosoma infection. This is important to remember that is mainly associated with the cystosoma infections. We already saw that to check for the carriers that are detected by the VI antibodies or the fecal or the urine culture. We use the technique that is the sieve swab techniques or the millipore membrane filtration technique. Okay, and according to div uh, division, we also have one is the chronic carrier that we already see that is more than one year. Then we have the temporary carriers that is three months to that of the one year, and the convulsant carrier that is up to three months after resolution of the symptoms. So, on the basis of division of the time period, one is the chronic more than one year, then we have temporary from three months to one year, and convulsant one that is up to three months after the resolution of the disease. So, diagnosis we do the Vidal test, and we do um, uh, that is the sensitivity. Bone marrow is the more sensitive than the uriculture. And according to the week, the distribution is shown. Now, drug of the choice is what? Ceftrioxone. Before, we used to give the chloramphenicol, but no more give because of the resistance. Ceftrioxone is the drug of the choice. And the alternative drug is the azithromycin. In case that is the empirical treatment we are talking about. In case of the fully suspectable uh, typhi, also ciprofloxacin uh, is the drug of the choice. And the alternative drug, we have the amoxicillin. Chloramphenicol and the pottery moxazole. Multiple drug resistance. If the resistance to ampicillin, cortinozone, chloramphenicol is there, then we give out ciprofloxacin. We give out ciprofloxacin and ceftrioxone. Now, for case of the uh, this cell molina. That is also responsible for causing what the food poisoning that is caused by the rest of the zero types of the cell molina, and this is mainly a zoonotic disease work. Incubation period we have up to 8 to 48 hours, and the patient will have the history of intake of the raw uh, milk products. Okay. Tool culture we do for the same food poisoning and it is mainly the cell molina typhi murium that is responsible. Treatment is mainly symptomatic and it is self-limited. No antibiotics are needed. Mainly we give the fluid and electrolyte balance. Okay, so mainly we give the fluid and the electrolyte balance, and the treatment is majorly self limited cell molina typhi murium and zoonotic disease one incubation period 8 to 48 hours and history of raw milk product consumption. Now, treatment is the same that is, uh, we give the third generation cephalosporin as the treatment. Now, we came to, uh, comes to the vaccine that is, first is the parental vaccine that is the killed vaccine whole cell killed vaccine two uh, doses are given six weeks apart then we have tab vaccine purified polysaccharide vaccine that is given more than two years and effective for, uh, after seven days booster after two years 
Next, we give the oral that is being asked. That is the type oral vaccine. This is what a live attenuated vaccine. Remember this vaccine, that oral vaccine, we give the type oral vaccine. That is a live attenuated vaccine. And three doses are given. And they are given on one, three and five days. After seven days, the start section and booster is given after five years. Okay, so oral vaccine that is the type oral vaccine, and we use the TY21A strain for the type oral vaccine, 135 schedule, and seven days its effect and booster after five years. Mainly given to the travelers and to the HIV patients. Now coming to now non typhoidal cell monella. Non typhoidal cell molina is differentiated from the typhoidal cell molina by zoonotic infection, neutrophilic infiltration, and more drug resistance than typhoidal cell molina. Transmission is mainly by the consumption of the animal food, poultry, and the milk and meat products, and the highest during the rainy season, more in that of the HIV and the neonates. Species we already saw it is a typhi murium that is the commonest. Apart from this, all the other serotypes of cell molina they will cause the this food poisoning. Salmonella septicemia typically caused by the cholerasis. Others are antritis, antritis and they duplicate. Clinical manifestations that is the food poisoning, cell molina gastroenteritis, bacteremia. Endovascular infections and localized infection, pulmonary and UTIs. Treatment we already saw that uh, cephalosporin, third generation cephalosporin, and ciprofloxacin is given mainly as the drug of the child. So, uh, we are done for today's session. This was a short session and 30 to 40 minute session only. So, please do use my code that is MUSKAN10 to get 10% of the discount and we'll discuss the Yasinia in short topic 10 to 15 minutes video only lecture that will be in the next session. So, take care and bye bye. Do like, share and subscribe. Do like, share and subscribe and press the bell, uh, bell icon and on 28th of November, on 28th of November at 5 p.m. we are having the NEET PG Compact Examination. So please attend that, please give that. We have up to 100% of the scholarship and up to 20,000 of rupees of Amazon gift voucher for you guys. So take care until that. Bye-bye.